Hey guys, this is an update on Ethereum Classic, and it looks as if the market decided to take a turn for the worse right before we were ready to analyze Ethereum Classic closely. But here's the five minute chart, and we can see some downside action. We're going to touch on that in just a second, but just to show where we've gone, we hit our low on May 12th. So it seems like an eternity ago, but we had a setup for some downside, and we we're seeing a lot of confirmation across other cryptos. Ethereum Classic eventually followed up. Ethereum Classic, of course, had a three-wave bounce in place, and we were highlighting the potential for some downside if we couldn't bounce back up for a fifth wave up in yellow-orange here. And well, ever since then, we did follow through on our setup. We had our one-two back here, and based on the Fibonacci extensions, we actually hit our targets pretty well. We had our third wave hit right between the 1.32 and 1.618 extensions, which is textbook standard, and we had a textbook standard follow-through for our fifth wave which actually did bottom just past the 2.0 extension. So a little bit more extended than we would expect, but it is Ethereum Classic. It's always a roller coaster ride with this coin as compared to many of the other altcoins. So ever since then, we had a rally in place. And if you've been watching my other updates, I've updated several specific individual coins as well as the entire segment. And we had what looked like a promising rally, but we never quite got the, the upward extensions we were looking for. We had what could have been counted as five up back up here on uh, May 15th, or even back here. That could have been an impulse. Maybe it was here. Different coins count a bit differently. I think Bitcoin Cash had this, the cleanest setup amongst the altcoins for some upside. But here we are at a critical juncture. This does count a bit differently from some of the other coins, such as Bitcoin Cash, which again, I've been using as a proxy for my altcoins. Here we can clearly count five waves up, although our fourth wave looked really funky and unconventional. And with the continued downside, and the fact we went sideways for so long tells me that we're probably not really in a wave two. So our bullish immediate upside pattern is hanging on by a thread. As you can see here, we have the potential for a one-two setup to the downside. That would call for this entire rally having been ABC zigzag. How you count the ABC is open to interpretation. The B wave could have been back here or up there. Um, corrective waves are kind of weird and unorthodox by nature. That's what you expect to see. And if nothing else, we don't have a clean impulsive setup. Now, if this thing turns back and rallies very sharply, then I might change my mind. But as of now, the close-up picture is showing, again, a one-two setup, impulse down, zigzag up. We had the uh, standard retrace, and we've broken down through our pivot box, which is the 0.618 to 0.764 region. So we're seeing more and more evidence mounting that we have some downside fall through coming. Other coins have more downside uh, movement as they've broken their 76.4% retrace marks. So in the case of Ethereum Classic, it's 17, 19, 17, 20. Once we break that, it's more or less going to happen. It's inevitable. So again, I'll that will make it official in my book. But again, like I said, other coins are are falling through a little bit more sharply. Ethereum is getting closer. Uh, I think I had a chart on Bitcoin I updated earlier. Uh, well, not that early, but uh, this will be updated very soon. And it does look like a one, two, one, two. And we're presumably in the third of a third and well on our way to lower lows. So not to get too pessimistic because I can't see us having a huge amount of downside left. I, as I mentioned, we did actually hyperextend a little bit, spiked down a bit lower than I was expecting based on the Fibonacci's on the short-term picture. But on the big picture, we actually didn't quite make it into the box for Ethereum Classic. So maybe Ethereum Classic was hinting earlier that we had a little bit more unfinished business to go. And uh, I've cleaned up this chart. Before I touch this, we have similar developments in the stock market as well, in which we had a very promising five-wave rally. So I know I have a lot of clutter on this chart, but uh, we can easily count that as a one, two, three, deep fourth wave, and a fifth wave up. Multiple ways to count it as five waves up. But this has just been a colossal spike down. This does not look like a zigzag corrective wave. This could be an impulse down. So that's a really negative sign if you're in the stock market. So hedge appropriately. And in addition to that, we had some really incomplete looking downside anyway. This last spike down last week is clearly a three-wave zigzag. This same pattern carries across almost every stock market index, including the Dow and the NASDAQ, and even to uh, some of the other smaller um tech sectors, things like that. So there's a lot of reason why we may, this may actually be best counted as a C wave up. So going back to Ethereum Classic, we have everything in place to get a lower low. So as of this exact moment, red is still primary. That says that the crash was over. We followed through as we we're expecting. However, I've added this orange alt pattern that would have us going into this box. How far into this box? If I had to give you my honest answer, I don't think we go too far in the box because we've already come down quite a bit. Um, 
our one-to-one ratio of our A wave to our C wave would fall at about 1425. So that would be about maybe a dollar 25 lower than the low we've had so far. So if I had to tell you my best guess, probably the upper half of this box, somewhere in there. Once it happens, expect a very, well, probably be a very quick event. It would descend very quickly and retrace sharply. If I have to give you some timing estimates, I, again, I follow the stock market all day. I do some, uh, I do swing trading on that, options trading. This should be, uh, it should follow through by the end of the week. That's what I'm looking at. You often see cryptos catching up because cryptos do trade around the clock. So whereas you may have your stock market have very condensed movements, nothing happens overnight and you have a lot of action during the daytime, cryptos sometimes rest during the day and they could catch up or do their thing in the middle of the night. We actually saw the stock, the stock market anyway, because we had our low at, uh, what is this about? Was this about 2, 2 p.m. afternoon, my time. Uh, and in the case of cryptos, they actually bottomed overnight. So about 12 hours later, don't be surprised if we see that kind of thing. Uh, we, maybe we can solve it overnight. Maybe we follow through. Maybe crypto jumps ahead down before the uh, equities do. So again, my message is always don't panic sell. Don't panic buy. We're close to the bottom and the top. If you've been holding through this whole correction, probably better just to hold. I did sell half my positions before the initial crash happened. So that was uh, a good bit further back. And I was able to buy the dip. So I sold about uh, probably about somewhere around here, maybe 30, somewhere between 25 and $30. And then I was able to buy the dip. I didn't buy the exact bottom because that's very difficult. It was middle of the night for me, but I did buy on the way back up. I have hedged my downside uh, using some Beto ETF puts that there's some videos on that. I didn't announce it this time because uh, it may be a little bit trickier to get in and out. I expect this to be a pretty quick event with fast follow through. So sell at your own peril. There's a chance I may sell some positions to try rebuying, but it's actually a very high risk play because if it drops, you may end up having to chase this thing going up the other way. So this is why I haven't had a, I haven't really sent out any BTFD alerts by the freaking dip because we never got a full confirmation, which again would be a five wave impulse up, three waves down, and then a bigger five wave up through our resistances, things like that. We never got that. So if you haven't bought yet, you shouldn't be feeling too much FOMO. You'll get another chance. Perhaps you buy the dip if we get it over the next day or two, three days, whatever. Otherwise, you could wait for a better impulse and more confirmation before you buy back in. So I'll have plenty more updates coming our way. Remember, eyes on the prize. We're much closer to the bottom than we are to any kind of top, no matter how much the news is trying to panic you and jar you. So until next time, thank you for watching and happy trading.